Hi, how's everybody doing today? I was just going through some old cards that I, I these all cards I have here are from the 90s. And uh, this is of the Flare showcase cards. I used to buy a few packs of them back in the day. So I actually just took them all out of penny sleeves and put them in new top loaders. And they're in really mint condition considering they're over 25 years old. And that's the standard Flare showcase. Well, that's this flare and that's flare showcase. You can see the shininess in them. They're beautiful cards. I don't care what era they're from. Flare just did, they, in my opinion, when they did a lot of baseball cards back in the day, they did a really good job on them. That's all gold. See that? That's right or white. Flare. I think they're very underrated cards. So, anyway. Everybody's talking about how these are junk error car, uh, junk error uh, cards from the junk error days or whatever. Well, you're not gonna make a ton of money on these cards if you resell them. But on eBay, each card is over four dollars. Uh, they say ninety nine cents on it, and it costs you four dollars for shipping. Or some of them be or even priced ten twenty dollars. This is Bubba Tramel. I remember this guy. This is Flare Metal. And these are what's well, like a real big deal, Flare Metal. Well, this is the first year they started making these cards. So that's what makes them special. Kind of in the 90s. Now everybody has these on there, but you see the ocean behind them and stuff. It's real detailed. And Joshua and I went through these and went through some stuff and found these cards and some of the old stuff I had. So we put them in penny sleeves and, and uh, I just got top loaders yesterday. So, yeah, those are really cool. I'm telling you what year they're from. And um, I did look at the videos that you guys were uh, responding to for my 200 giveaway. And, um, yeah, I'm working on getting a camera. I didn't realize that um, when I took, because when, when I look at it on the camera, it looks full screen. But I didn't realize when I um, take these videos that people can barely see what's going on but this is some of the stuff like the hawk was talking about it some other f folks that did the re uh, response video which i'm very grateful and i just you know that's how you grow in a channel and you should be able open for um criticism to grow but these are some of the old, i mean these things i've had it, it is like this is a frequent fly uh fr frequent flyer one marquise grissom Access for airlines, you know what I mean? And in the back, it's got cool shit on it, too. These cards are rare to find. I don't really care what anybody says. You can't find these kind of cards in this condition. So, yeah, you do. If you got cards like this in your collection, you're looking at five dollars a piece for them around there. And this is Rusty Grid because they just don't make them, man. And back then, you know, they didn't really have the equipment that we have. Uh, as uh, they will preserve the cards that make the you know luckily I just stored them away and had used the equipment that was available to me and like I said there's they're in mint condition I, I would even send some of the stuff out to get graded at PSA honestly it's another random light because I think they at least come back eights even higher there may be some tens in here honestly I take good care of my stuff these are just some stuff uh, you know, they're saying about my collection, people wanted to see some more stuff. Well, I got rid of tons of stuff in Ohio, but in Florida, I have just as much. I got a storage unit full of cards. And I have 70s, 80s, all the error. I did sell my 95. Um, I accidentally put it in the bin when I sold this bin. And sold the 95 or 94 uh, Fleer football full set. This is this is flair, see? It's passion. And on the back of these cards, but they this one isn't numbered. But on the back right there, the way they used to number the cards is it would tell you. Because I found a I found a couple of uh, tops archives from two thousand and one football and um I had a few uh, special inserts and one of them is um um uh, Joe Montana archives refractor reprint rookie card and it's number 40 out of 94 so yeah 
And that cartridge was selling for $80 ungraded. And people are asking a lot for those. So those types, and this dude was one of the best pitchers ever, Dennis Martinez. I don't think he gets enough credit. He played for the Angel, uh, the Indians, and he also played, I think, for the Dodgers. But, yeah, and these, look, these are special. Mark, I can never say this guy's name, but I'm going to try. Grudzai Lanky. Grudzinki, Lizinki. Um, Montreal Expos was a really good player. A lot of people don't know about him, or they maybe they do. And then on some of those cards right here, I'm sorry, I'm moving. And I do have epilepsy. That's on my handshake. So I am trying to get a tripod and I take medicine for that. But I didn't realize that it shakes so much when I'm making videos. So I do apologize. I am going to get better equipment. But I was just trying to show you some of this. Dennis Ray's. I mean, these aren't really, they're minor stars, but I just kept everything, and I got, like, the Ken Griffey Juniors to this, and all and all the Cal Ripken, all the main cards, too, but i just showing you these minor stars. This Pookie Reese, his name is Calvin, really, but they called him Pookie, that's his nickname. You see, that any time that you send these, these are untouched right there. More than likely, you'll get at least a nine, and even possible ten of my PSA because they're in mint condition. They're got they got film on it, so I collect the top finest. That's top finest from the nineties. See, I just like the way the cards look, and if you compare them to nowadays cards, um, these cards are a lot more sturdier and they're a lot easier to keep. Not, they're actually thicker. You can't really see it, but. They're just a little bit thicker than the standard cards. And there's like Jeff Reed. I liked him with the Rockies. This is when the Rockies expansion just started too, mind you. It was in the 90s. So yeah. And then of course. They, Gonzalez just was a beast in the World Series. So yeah. And there's another one. All these are, I've never taken the film off of them. I've kept them on there. And there's other people. Brad Braddock, he is a good player. I think he played for the Indians also. He is good. Um, with the baseball being so juiced nowadays, um, and that's what I've been saying for a while, and now people are actually agreeing with me, like, oh, it's not juiced. Okay, yeah, all right. I'm telling you, I could hit a ball 125 feet plus, and I have a replaced shoulder with the balls we're using. They're traveling at least 12 yards, I mean, at least 12 feet. I see three yards on a minimum, and three that's three times three is nine nine yards. Or nine feet is traveling, an extra nine feet. And you don't have to be a rocket physicist to figure if you can get an extra nine feet on a bat, you're gonna have a career season. See this? These are these are in mint condition, dude. There's no scratches on them, and like oh, big deal. These are over twenty euro cards, okay? And you. People are saying all the garbage error. Yeah, maybe for the, some of that Don Ross and stuff like that, I agree with you. But these cards here, uh, you know, it cost even back then um, a few dollars to get these cards. Okay, it wasn't, they weren't cheap. In today's standards, you'd probably be paying like eight, seven, eight dollars a pack for these cards. And then these, I had the basketball one and the football one, but I can't find a basketball one. And I have 86 Fleer too. So, but this is 87 Fleur sticker cards. Okay, these are really hard to find. They're in pretty good condition. I'd say, like, they would be back eights or better, like I said. And then pretty straight. I'm really hard on cards, too. I'm probably worse than the PSA people when I look at cards. But these are stars. Star stickers. And they're very difficult to get. Okay, so... Anybody trying to tell you that this stuff's in, in this condition, at least, you know, you, you're not finding a lot of this stuff. They did put the set together, but this is the stickers, okay? So you'd have to open a lot of packs just to get a sticker card. Unless you buy boxes, then you're going to get two stickers in the box. And uh, at least one sticker and at least one special card. Like, if you buy a box of unopened 86 flare if you ever found a box of that that's not been tampered with or anything unless so you did you would have at least one sticker and at least one jordan in there so you would it'd be well worth the purchase you're gonna find at least one jordan in a box 
Uh, and I've seen many of the boxes open, and I have a few myself. One's really mangled pretty badly, but it's still a Jordan A6. But, but Jeff Reardon is another guy, no respect. See, there's this little thing on the top. And I'm not sure if that's from the penny sleeves, which I already did it, our, uh, a video about penny sleeves and how it will da damage your stuff because these people put holes in the penny sleeve containers and what happens is um, you get dust on the front surface of your card. So if you had a refractor, it would be scratched to shit, man. And you wouldn't know it and you would send it in to PSA and you'd be like, why the hell did this thing come back? This Because, uh, dude, uh, there's stuff inside the penny sleeve. Yeah, so, and these are really old Star ones. Bruce Sutter. He was actually, in, you know, another sleeper. He's on Star a lot. And this is from 1980. Okay, so you, these are 80 stickers. And like, okay, his ERA is 240. And this dude is, is one of the best, okay, I think. And then you got Rick Ritual, Rischel. He's a good ball player too, and this looks like it may be at the end of his career because I think he started in the 60s. He, but Dennis Martinez pitched it for 20 years, you know what I mean? Everybody makes a big deal about, um, I mean, Nolan Ryan is the greatest pitcher I've ever seen. I don't care anybody says I've seen the dude pitch. Did you see that one corner? That's not bad considering you're looking at from the 1980s, so what, 40 years old almost? around there and you know some more of these and I have a lot more too I have to go through believe me I have a lot more this is nothing Willie Randolph that's my man car, uh, collectaholics guy he likes any likes of William uh, Bernie Williams which was one of my favorite Yankees besides Jeter Bernie Williams was badass he could he could play some ball he's a good, good ball player I enjoyed watching him play I miss him I miss the old time baseballs, but congratulations to St. Louis. They really put it to Atlanta yesterday. And uh, God willing, the Dodgers fire Roberts. Uh, he's a horrible, horrible coach. And with the team that he has, you, any one of us could get a hundred, almost a hundred wins with that team. Um, he overused Kershaw. He did very shit. He did shit with his lineups. It was uh, that game was a game that they should have won easily. Atlanta, I know there's like I've been telling everybody, there's been some stuff going on in the locker room with Acuna's antics, and um, we used to call it in tennis tanking. When you tank a play, is that you don't try or you give up or you quit or whatever, and you're not uh, pros don't do that. Okay, um, when you're a pro at something. Like, I didn't walk out on the tennis court and say, I'm not going to win today, I'm going to lose. I would go out on the tennis court as if I'm already won the match in my mind because if you don't put that, of course you want to be um, a gentleman and um, use proper etiquette and not use profanity and don't question calls unless the, you're talking to a ref or something. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, tennis is a lot different. Let's put it that way. If a person ever tanked, in tennis, um, they would be pretty, they'd be tore up pretty badly in the locker room by the other pros. I can tell you that much. And I don't care if you're in women's tennis or men's tennis, tanking is um, very serious. And it's been causing some issues in the locker room with the Atlanta Braves. And yesterday, St. Louis jumped all over their ass because uh, they didn't play with harmony. I've been watching the Braves play since I've been a kid, and they've always had pitching, and I've never seen the Braves give up 10 runs in one inning. I even text Missouri cards. I was like, oh, my God, are you watching this? And he's like, yeah, holy smokes. I was like, can they score 20 runs in this game? It was pretty bad. Um, anyway, and Dodgers, like I said, um, they got real issues with that coach. He had, uh, he had lineup issues last year. Uh, the year before that, he had lineup issues. He's taking Jock Peterson out, Corey Seager out. Uh, Corey Seager was out last year because of injury, but the prior year to that, he took him out of lineup uh, when he was hitting really well because there was left-handed pitchers against left-handed. I don't care, man. Barry Bonds would hit against anybody person out there, right-handed, left-handed, and smash it. Give him a chance. It doesn't matter to me. That's all bullshit. If you have the best batters, you put them out there. What do you do? Sit Babe, Babe Ruth on the on the on the bench because there's a left-handed pitcher 
That's the stupidest thing I've ever seen or heard. And it cost them. By the time they figured it out, they put the guys in the middle of the fourth or fifth inning. They're already down five runs. So you're asking superstars to come back from, in, you know, almost unsurmountable odds every time they step out on the field. That's just my opinion. He's a crap coach. He'd probably be a good pitching coach or his strategy sucks. Okay, and he, when he has um, talent at that magnitude, there's, you know, like I said, uh, when you, we can coach it. These guys coach themselves. They pretty much do. It's the lineups and how you use pitching. And, you know, when Kershaw's not pitching that well or, or something, I personally think something's wrong with his arm. You know, that's what I'm, you got to give the dude a rest. Okay, he's been in the league since like 2009 or whatever. Or whatever the case might have been, uh, he's been around for a while. Okay, so uh, not 2009 is like it's been in the league like 10 years. So you got to use those type of pit people in s certain points, you know. And then when they throw enough pitches, you have to have somebody else out there to get them a break, you know. Depending on how they're feeling and what they're doing. If the guy's giving up five runs in one inning, you got to pull him out of there, okay? It's not good for a psyche, and he, he did, you made a bad decision on starting him. So, God willing, they fire his ass. There's no reason the Dodgers should have not. You know, they, they had a good chance to win last night, and and the Nationals are good. I mean, but I just think that if you look at the players on both sides, you're really going to see a big a big advantage for the Dodgers. Pitching, hitting, if I mean, just have a lot of talent on that team. A lot of talent. But congratulations to those two teams. And uh, now I don't see anybody really beating the Yankees. Um, it could be a quick World Series. And I have to go off to Aaron Judge if he pulls it off. And his screw over there. I just like baseball. And if you're a Pirates fan, you can watch any baseball, believe me been doing the first years watching this team lose and then we got crazy owners and thank god he fired hurley because i was getting sick every time that guy stepped out there to talk to the players you know what the hell's going on out there here we go uh, let's trade uh andrew mccutcheon let's trade uh, uh, uh austin meadows let's trade uh, uh, wait, glasgow we don't need him let's get him rid of him i mean god are you serious what they do to their teams, in my opinion, the Pirates, is so criminal to baseball. Because I'm telling you, if those, if they had the team, see, these are so nice. If they kept all the players on our team that we traded, we would be in the world. So maybe we'd have the, it would be the Dodgers, but it wouldn't be the Pirates. Than that. Also, I didn't know if I showed it to you, but I'll find it and show it to you later. They have clear cards from, forget who makes it. But they're clear, okay, completely back, the back's clear, and they're from the early 90s. And as I said, these type of cards, they're five bucks a piece. It doesn't matter what the player is. And if that was Nolan Ryan on there, you're looking at maybe 15 to $20 for this card, okay? It's a junk error in my ass, okay? If you got flair, uh, showcase, and stuff like that, you're going to have nice cards. People spent a lot of money for those packs of cards back in the day, as I said, and and then the Fleur Metal and stuff like that. Dennis Martinez, Minor Stars. And look these guys up on the internet, okay? Look them up on on YouTube and see what they're talking about. You'll be like, how is this guy not in the Hall of Fame? And um, he is in the Hall of Fame, I believe. Or if he isn't, he's going to be in there. But, yeah. I have a lot of... Oh, these, these are one other ones I thought maybe you guys would like to see Tim Louder. See how... I love these cars. I got I'm almost from the 80s on to present time, you know, when they stopped making them. Pretty cool. See, like, a, a big old fat head on them, and then you put it like that. It's pretty cool. They don't make them anymore. Anyway, I'll show you the rest of them another day because the video is a little longer than I thought. So, until next time, you guys, take care of yourselves and take care of each other, and God bless everybody.